With more than half a dozen DEXs preparing to launch in the Cardano network, there's an equal amount of approaches on how to handle these swaps. Let's take a look at Sunday Swap and their proposed scooper model. The Plutus application backend is in testnet and nearly ready for launch. Are you ready for what comes next? And the IOHK Africa tour continues full steam ahead. It's time for the weekly report. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today it's time for the weekly report. So let's do a quick stake pool update and jump right in. As always, we want to start off by saying a huge thank you and welcome to all of our newest delegators. We truly appreciate your support and we're really excited to go on this journey with you. Let's keep growing together. So with Sunday Swap preparing to go live in the near future, easily the biggest news this week was the article they released about their scooper model, the way that Sunday Swap is planning on handling the exchanges and swaps in the actual Sunday Swap protocol. So we're going to link this full article below. It's a really great read, but let's go over a high level overview of what we think is the most important stuff for everyone to understand. So let's take a look at Sunday Swap's scooper model. In this article, what they start off with is saying, okay, look, there are five different ways that we've seen about how the different swaps can happen. And then from there, we wanted to evaluate all those different approaches on several different criteria. So they've got here scalability, contention, minor extractable value, decentralization, denial of service, volume independence, and the development effort itself. They put together what is sort of their opinion, obviously, on these different approaches and then rank them on all of those different criteria and sort of what they thought were the strengths and weaknesses of each. And then looking at each of these different approaches, evaluated against all these different criteria, they go through all of the ones that they evaluated and then the ones they rejected along the way and why. So we're not gonna go into detail about why each one was rejected, but it is interesting to point out that as they go through them, they go into really good detail about how they each work and sort of first set a primer for here's the thing and how it's done. And then they go through what the limitations are and why they chose to not use that approach. Additionally, as they say, they're not necessarily trying to bash any other protocol, but I think both for the sake of comparison of understanding like different approaches people are taking and why, they mention where relevant, which of the approaches is like which of the other DEXs that are going to launch soon. So for example, open batching, here's the diagram, they talk through the whole thing, and they say that this solution is most similar to the one proposed by MinSwap, for example. Uh, then when we see escrow tokens, again, a diagram on how it works, and they say this is the most similar to what MELD is proposing with the reference of reserve tokens. Continuing on, they go through mixed escrows, which is sort of a hybrid model. The programmable order book appears to be most similar to the solution proposed by Maladex. Now, I would suspect because of the Maladex white paper and the amount of attention that Maladex has been getting, or maybe it's just because it's the one that they found that they thought might be the best approach for them, they actually, whereas in the other ones here, they just kind of briefly mention what it is, who seems to be doing this approach, and why they decided against using it for their protocol, for the programmable order book that Maladex is implementing, they actually spent almost half the article going into some of the things that they thought were strong about it, but then all these different reasons why they decided to not use it. And actually for each one of these bullets, they have a whole chapter dedicated to how they thought each of these things was going to be a problem and why they decided to not go that route. So where they do say like, hey, we're not trying to bash any other approach or any other decks, they spent a lot of time going into what they thought were some of the reasons why the Maladex approach might not work out. So sort of reading the subtext there, I would suspect that Sunday Swap views Maladex as probably one of their strongest competitors in the DEXs that are coming out. But then in a very methodical way, after they've gone through all of the other approaches, and why they decided to not use those, they get to their solution, the scooper model or the automated market maker order book. So here we go, the scooper model or the AMM order book is what they've decided to go with. Again, scoop being a nice play on uh, you know, the Sunday swap theme. So when we talk about what a scooper is and what the role of this scooper would be sort of in the actual swapping process, I think it's useful to actually scroll back up to one of these diagrams here, one of the first ones at the very top where they talk about the inefficient use of liquidity and what happens when you have like one large order and then you've got a couple of different places the swap can be filled from and you have another small order here and how do you balance what gets swapped where, and then the need for, instead of it being a direct connection between the person providing the liquidity and the one trying to do the swap, how you need someone to kind of sit in the middle to facilitate the actual scooping of these transactions between 
the different consumers and providers. So knowing that we need someone in the middle to be this scooper, then the idea is, okay, so what are these scoopers? Who would they be? And how would they do this work? So the scooper builds and submits the transaction, which executes many swaps against the automated market maker. And in return, that scooper for doing that work collects a small ADA fee. Now, this is an important thing to keep in mind. Even though the scooping itself is done and facilitated by smart contracts and it is routed through this scooper actor who's doing this work, the scoopers themselves can never take the funds that are in your order. They can never withdraw liquidity from the pool or execute an order other than the one that you specified. So they're facilitating these transactions, but there's no way for them to actually like take any of your ADA or mess with the liquidity pool at all. But as they mentioned earlier in the article, even though there's no way for this facilitator to actually take the ADA or mess with the actual liquidity of the pool itself, there are things that they can do potentially to uh, do what they called a trickle attack, where they instead slowly submit the swaps and potentially introduce congestion to the network, really drawing out the different transactions. And there's a couple of other things that a malicious actor in this role could do to really slow down the whole process. So because of that, what you need to do, the first step is to choose a trusted member of the community to be these actual scoopers. So they can't take your ADA, they can't mess with the liquidity, but they can really cause some havoc if they were acting sort of out of order. So if you need trusted intermediaries and you wanna figure out who are the trusted people in the Cardano network who can do this work today, they've decided to select stake pools to partner with the ISO and with the help of the community, they're gonna identify a group of stake pools to be the initial group of scoopers. So this is a great idea, right? You need someone to sit in the middle, you need that person to be trusted, and you need them to facilitate these transactions. So what does that sound like? Let's see, somebody who can sit in the middle, who can facilitate transactions, who can't steal your ADA in any way, but if they were not doing their work correctly, could really slow things down and cause problems. That sounds a lot like the stake pool model and the proof of stake with the Ouroboros protocol that Cardano is doing today. And they actually sent out a sign-up form for stake pool operators to apply using their existing pools and have the stake pool that's already there serve as that intermediary actor and handle the scooping and batching of transactions to the actual swap back and forth. So yes, before all of you ask in the comments, we have applied for Aspen to be one of the scoopers in this protocol to help facilitate these transactions. And once the Sunday swap team evaluates all the applications, they're going to put up a list of a filtered set of those who applied and those who make it to that point will be voted on by the community. So if Aspen makes it to that phase, we'll let you all know and then we'll kind of just go from there. But yes, we have uh, applied and we're really excited to see this model that seems like a really, really great approach using trust that's already on the network that stake pool operators have already set up. Next, we've been talking a lot about the Plutus application backend and all of the components with it and how important the PAB is going to be to have smart contracts really roll out in mass on the Cardano blockchain. So on the 5th of November, IOHK tweeted that they've just released a beta version of the integrated PAB and it's now on the Cardano testnet. So things are really moving here. Um, and what we've heard from Charles and a few others is that the best estimates of the PAB going to mainnet is probably like late November, early December. So we're really, really close. And let's remember that the implications of the PAB release is that once it's much easier for folks to be able to develop complex apps on the Cardano blockchain, we should really start seeing the rollout of really, really interesting and complex decentralized applications rolling out on Cardano. Next, it's worth mentioning that Charles and the IO team with their Africa tour is still going full steam ahead. They've been now to, I think, four or five different countries. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that, yes, we're following this. We know that it's happening. Um, and when there's a summary put together of what all the big takeaways are of the result of the Africa tour, we'll do a dedicated video on just that, but just something to keep in mind. And if you wanna stay on top of the Africa tour in real time, Charles has been tweeting about it every step of the way. So if you follow his Twitter account, you'll be able to stay on top of it there. Lots of huge stuff around the corner. We're almost there. It's really, really exciting to see it. Let us know what you're most excited about and we'll see you next week.